everyone. Welcome back to Mexico Relocation Guide. This is the best resource to move to Mexico with confidence. My name is Mariana and today I have for you a very special place right in the heart of Western Mexico. This place is and has been for a long time one of the most beloved and precious towns in Mexico for expat retirees from all over around the world. If you still don't know which town I'm talking about, don't worry, we're going to cover it. So stick around and let's find out together. Now what you're seeing on screen probably already gave up the mystery, but if you still don't know, let me give you another hint. We're talking about the main town on the shore of the biggest lake in Mexico. We're talking about the beautiful, well-known expat haven of Chapala, which is located in the heart of the state of Jalisco, one of the most culturally richest and best providing states in all of Mexico. This is a main municipality on the shore of the lake with the same name, and it is estimated that around 24,000 people live in Chapala. The Chapala Lake region hosts one of the most pleasant environments in the country, and I'm not only referring to weather, but also the vibe and lifestyle of the town. But we'll get into that in a few minutes. Now, if you didn't know this, the lake and its towns are sitting in a mountain range with an average altitude of 5,100 feet above sea level. This combination of mountains, lake breeze, and highland vegetation around create a more than enjoyable climate all year round, which means it's never too hot or too cold. And because of that, it really is no wonder why this area has been home to various settlements throughout history. The first inhabitants date back to the 12th century, and it's believed that it was a Nahuatl tribe called Cocas, who migrated from Northern Mexico and settled here first. They gave the name of Chapalan to the village, which roughly translates to the drenched place. And they lived here peacefully for 400 years until the Spaniard conqueror Alonso de Avalos and the Franciscan evangelist Fray Juan de Padilla made the first contact with the natives in 1524. In the following years, the construction of Catholic churches began in the area, like the one in Ajijic and Tlayacapan, and the majority of the population consisted of indigenous natives and evangelists. During the fight for independence, Chapala was the stage of a few battles, and after the war was over, the government granted the title of municipality to the town of Chapala. So based on this, it's probably normal to think that nowadays Chapala stands out as one of the most desirable places to live, not only with Mexicans, but with anybody in the world. Now this is one of the regions within the country with the highest percentage of expats on an immigrant and local racial scale. So basically the number of immigrants or foreigners to Mexicans. The foreign population is mainly made up of North American immigrants, usually from the United States and Canada. However, in recent years, the European and Asian population has really grown in this area, slowly turning this into a truly international and diverse community and leaving behind its reputation as a gringo town. But if you're coming to live the real Mexican experience and not bubbling yourself up in an expat environment, we recommend you interact with the native community. This is a truly welcoming and warm town, and it's a major evidence of how this all makes different cultures and lifestyles coexist in such a nice way. Chapala is a small territory, but huge in spirit. You will encounter happy people, always willing to help, always smiling, and always willing to interact with you. It's a very relaxed lifestyle here, and it's one of those towns where everyone seems to know each other. So whichever way you decide to go, it will be super easy to make friends here. You will find that locals have a fairly well knowledge of the English language, so it won't be hard to interact with them. And in any case, we do strongly recommend you try your best to learn Spanish. Not only will it help you socialize, but also to navigate the place on your own, like being able to run your errands without a language barrier. It's always good to make friends with the natives to practice your Spanish with them and let them practice their English with you. Now, besides the great weather and vibe, one of the things that make Chapala a really desirable place to live is its low cost of living, which may not be super affordable by Mexican standards, but with the exchange rate for most people moving to Mexico from the United States and Canada, it definitely becomes substantially more affordable than you would pay in the United States. For example, you could live here on a monthly budget of 1500 US dollars a month. 
So how true is that? Let me break that down for you. Housing in Chapala is actually way more affordable than in Ajijic. Remember that both of these towns are part of the Chapala municipality and only about 15 minutes away from each other. However, there is a higher concentration of foreigners in Ajijic than in Chapala, making Chapala more affordable or less competitive when it comes to renting or buying property here. You can find, you can easily find the same priced rentals in either town, but Ajijic does tend to be far more competitive, so it is harder to find rentals in the same budget than you would in Chapala. In Chapala, you can find a two bedroom, two bath house starting at 18,000 pesos a month or about 900 US dollars in a modest neighborhood. Now, sure, you can find a bigger home that can offer you more space or some other amenities like a terrace with a lake view, more bedrooms or 24 seven security. But these things usually come with a cost. Now, if you're looking to buy property, don't be surprised to encounter a lot of international real estate companies that handle all their prices in US dollars. To give you an example, a modest two bedroom house with an average of 100 square meters or roughly 1,000 square feet of construction can be sold for an estimate of 150,000 US dollars. Now, again, surely you can find cheaper options, but then you will usually have less space, fewer amenities, or maybe the house is just not as modern. It all comes down to what kind of lifestyle you want to live. The same applies if you were looking for a higher end lifestyle. You can find big haciendas, bigger homes on the outskirts of town, sitting on a hill with lots of space, many guest rooms, a pool, terrific views. And these usually go for about half a million dollars. Now, obviously you would be further away from town. So those are a lot of numbers, right? I don't want to complicate this too much and set a rough average. I just want to give you an idea of what you can find in Chapala. So if you wanted to find something for, let's say a thousand US dollars a month, you could find a two bedroom, two bath house in a nice quiet street, no problem at all. Now, let me get a breakdown for you of the cost of utilities. One thing you should have in mind is that it is becoming a more common practice for landlords to include the, include the cost of basic services in the monthly rent in the Lake Chapala area. However, so you have an idea of how much you should be paying for water, electricity, gas, and internet without getting taken advantage of, let me give you some average prices for each one of these. Your water bill should come every month and you can expect to pay 400 pesos or less. Either you have a fixed fee or consume base fee. This should be the norm in a two person household. Electricity in Mexico is far more affordable since the CFE, the only electricity provider in Mexico, subsidizes part of the cost to make it more affordable for Mexican families. The bill comes to your house every two months and you should pay around 300 to 500 pesos making it an average of 200 pesos a month or about 10 US dollars. Because keep in mind, the weather is very temperate here, so you don't need air conditioning or heating. Now gas is provided by several companies, but apparently the go-to for locals is Gas Licuado, which is a brand of Zeta Gas, a major gas provider in Mexico. Whether you have a 30 liter switchable tank or a stationary tank, a two month period should go for about 800 pesos, making an average of 400 pesos a month or about 20 US dollars a month. And finally, internet is provided by either Telmex, Total Play, or Mega Cable, and this will depend on your internet needs. Now, if you only need it for streaming services and occasional video calls, you can get basic 100 megabyte download speed that should cost around 600 pesos a month, which is around 30 US dollars. Now, if you want to download really heavy files, you're into gaming, or your livelihood depends on really good internet, then we recommend you get a one gigabyte download speed package that should cost you around 1500 pesos or about 75 US dollars a month. So just to give you some simple math, if you paid $1,000 a month for rent, $20 a month for your water bill, $10 a month for your electricity bill, $20 a month for gas, $75 a month for internet, then you're looking at spending $1125 US dollars a month for housing and basic services. So far so good, right? But you also need food, personal care, healthcare, transportation, and leisure to consider. So let's go into those.
there are a lot of markets and commerce going on daily. Chapala is filled with all kinds of stores where you can get all your basic goods, from fruits, vegetables, dairy, meat, personal care products, and day-to-day -day tools to fix any issue that could come up. All of these will be within a few steps from you. The town is really well provided with all these stores. Now, there are some local markets in town, as well as in Akihik, where you can find all these products in the same place. And a big plus is you can find organic quality products since most of the vendors are local producers. Some of them are farmers and some other are artisans that produce their own soap, toothpaste, cleaning products, and more. So you, if you're not into mainstream brands, buying from these merchants will be a great option for you. Now, if you want to visit a mercado, and I hope you do, there's a great one right by the Malecon. This indoor open market has everything from meat, cheeses, fruits, vegetables, and even flowers, and it's there daily. One of the best features of living in Mexico is that all these products are way more affordable, especially if you buy directly from the producers. And also, depending on the day or the tianguis you are going to, sometimes there are promotions and discounts. So we recommend that you explore more than one market and interact with different vendors to find which one gives you the best prices, as well as who has the best quality. It's hard to make an average of how much you would spend on groceries because everybody has different needs and everybody eats different amounts. But to give you a rough idea, we can say that a two-person household buying enough food and household goods for a month without sparing or counting cents should spend somewhere between 3,000 to 4,000 pesos or around 150 to 200 US dollars a month. Now, again, don't take this as a definite calculation. There are a lot of factors that you need to consider to make a monthly average on your groceries expense. Now, especially if you have some kind of special diet or your standards on the quality of products are particularly high, or if you like to buy a lot of imported brands. Now, if you're not ready to leave behind some special treats or brands from back home, then you can expect to spend a little more since these products or brands will be imported, meaning that whoever is selling these has to pay more on taxes to bring these products to their stores. Chapala has some imported product markets, but if you want to have a broader spectrum of imported goods, then you should do as most people do in the area and take a day trip to Guadalajara, which is one hour away, and there you will have a lot more options for you to choose from. Now, this 200 US dollar average that I gave you considering food is only considering basic goods, namely food, personal care, and household products. You still need to consider other expenses like getting there, cutting your hair, medication if you need it, eating out, clothing, having household help, and all of these things to maintain a comfortable lifestyle. So let's keep breaking all of these down. If you've watched any of my other videos, we talk a lot about healthcare in Mexico. And by now, if you've watched any of those videos, you know that healthcare in Mexico is superb. Here in Chapala, you can find two hospitals, one in Ajijic, that is named Hospital Ajijic, and the Rivera Medical Center, both of them offering really good service and specialty doctors. Now, if you want a bigger hospital, you don't find the specialty you need in any of these. Once again, you have the option to take a short one hour ride to Guadalajara and surely you will find the specialist you're looking for there. For smaller issues, there are always private consultations at the many pharmacies scattered across town. These are extremely inexpensive, around three US dollars for a consultation. And if you need medication, you can get it directly at the pharmacy. And because a lot of Mexican students finish their medical training in the United States or Europe, a lot of them tend to speak really good English and have excellent equipment and training in their fields. So how do you get around? Well, as in any other village, your best way to get from one place to another is by simply walking. Or if you like to bike around, feel free to get on one and navigate this town on two wheels. The Chapala area is walking and biking friendly. And there is actually an exclusive bike lane or ciclovia on the main road. And we see a lot of people making use of it. Now within the town, it will be actually easier to move around by walking. The streets are very small, so moving around in a car would sometimes be counterproductive and take longer. And as I mentioned before, anywhere you go, you'll see stores, coffee shops, restaurants, and all kinds of different commerce. So it's not like you'll have to cross the whole town on foot to get your goods or run your errands. Now, if you wanna go even further, let's say you wanna visit a friend in Ajijic, Jocotepec, or even go to Guadalajara, well then you'll have a bus station where you can get a ticket for 15 pesos to ride any of the nearby towns on the shore of the lake, 
or you can just simply walk to the main road, look for a bus stop, and wait for the bus. The price will be the same. If you want to go to Guadalajara, you can wait for the bus on the main road, which we wouldn't recommend if you're in a hurry since the bus makes a lot of stops along the road and it could end up taking you two to three hours to get to Guadalajara. It'll be a lot easier if you go to the bus station, get a ticket for the Chapala Plus bus, which is a direct trip, maybe makes one or two stops, you have AC on board, and you'll make no more than one hour to Guadalajara. The price is 60 pesos. And then the International Guadalajara Airport, which is about 30 to 45 minutes away, depending on the time of the day you go uh, from Chapala, you can fly anywhere you want within Mexico. It has flights to virtually any state in Mexico, as well as international flights to the United States, Canada, and Europe. Now, there are also taxis in Chapala, but just a cautionary tale, it can be hard to get them on the weekends or sometimes after 8 p.m. So I do recommend you make a list of all the drivers that have given you taxi rides and start putting them into your favorites on your phone. That way you always have a phone call that you can make in case you need a ride. And then what do you do for fun? Well, first of all, if your idea of having fun is wild parties and never ending lists of activities, you should probably look somewhere else like Guadalajara. Chapala, on the other hand, offers a relaxed and calm lifestyle. Now, I'm not saying it's a boring town by any means. I'm simply saying that this town is perfect for those who are looking to live a peaceful and quiet life. You can have the occasional night out and listen to live music with a nice glass of vino, but it doesn't mean that you'll probably be staying up until three or four in the morning. Now, obviously the lake will be the main attraction on this town, especially for tourists, since there are a lot of agencies offering boat tours within the lake where you can visit some islands like the Island of Scorpions or La Isla de los Alacranes, as the locals call it. It gets its name not because there's a heavy population of scorpions, as most of the world would think, but because the island is shaped like a scorpion. The island is located in front of the Chapala Malecon and it hosts an old Huixarica sanctuary, a sacred heritage for the state of Jalisco, as well as many restaurants and other attractions, like a chapel and natural reserve. There's also the island of Mezcala, which is right in front of the town with the same name. The island is bigger and its main attraction would be an old military fortress, which worked as a prison during the Independence War. You can tour this old building and enjoy the spectacular views of the lake that the island provides. But if you prefer to stay on the ground, then you can try to join the several hiking groups operating in the area. Joining them is easy as looking for them on Facebook. So just join a few Facebook groups for the local area and find out when people are getting together. There are a lot of hiking trails and all of them will offer you a great and peaceful nature getaway. Now, when it comes to eating out or having a few drinks, you have countless options. Whether you chose to go near the Malecon, which is a pedestrian strip, or to the main square, you can find a lot of options for great restaurants and great bars, everything from gluten-free, to only seafood, to only meat, vegetarian, and everything in between. The more you walk around, the more gems you will find. Now, as I mentioned before, the shore of Lake Chapala has been home to several artists, and to this day, they keep coming and staying. It's truly an enigmatic place if you're looking to let your creativity reach new levels, so don't be surprised to come across some top-notch art galleries, clothing boutiques, or jewelry stores. The artisans living in the area are out of this world and you will find some serious art pieces. Now, also remember that this is a privileged location. You're just an hour away from Guadalajara, a city that hosts a great number of festivals and has a vibrant nightlife. You're also nearby other magical towns like Tequila, Mazamitla in the same state of Jalisco. Or you can go further distances to explore towns in the surrounding states like Pátzcuaro, Michoacán, Guanajuato, or San Miguel de Allende. And you're just a few hours away from the beach, from Puerto Vallarta, Sayulita, and San Pancho. And if you're an avid enjoyer of outdoor sports like golf, there are two country clubs in the area, the Chula Vista Country Club and the Chapala Country Club, both of them offering a nice nine hole course as well as other services in their first class facilities. So you see, you'll never run out of things to do in Chapala. It really is a really nice place to live. The reason why so many foreigners have fallen in love with Chapala is crystal clear. It truly has everything and more. Unbeatable weather, a welcoming community, 
really nice restaurants, such a great and endemic energy that just magnetizes whoever sets foot in this place. I mean, it's really a nice place. If you are seriously considering moving to a new country and Mexico is on your list, I recommend you try it for one month. Stop being afraid and take the step. The only way to know if it's a good decision is to actually come and check it out yourself. Spend a month in Chapala or in any town that has caught your attention and experience what your life in Mexico could be. Now, get in touch with us. Check out our website, MexicoRelocationGuide.com. We provide a list of our recommended relocation tour guides so you can start your new life in the best and most comfortable way possible. If you're interested in a scouting trip, we can run you, we can recommend you a relocation tour guide that will not only tour you around their local area, but will also answer a lot of your questions of what it's actually like to live in this town. Now, the biggest thing here is that there's no agenda to sell you anything. They're just your friendly guide that will show you around. So that's it for today, my friends. I would love to stay more time with you, but we hit the end of the road, at least when it comes to Chapala. I hope that you got some new insights and learned a lot more about Chapala with this video. This is one of the most desirable places in the world. So I know that there's a lot of information out there. However, there is only one Mexico relocation guide and I always do my best to give you guys the best and most updated information about each town. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. It's time to say not goodbye, but see you later. Stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching. Hasta luego.